Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, Heaven's Ward. So, last time, we were forced to detour back to Ishgard to find out that Sid, as well as Biggs and Wedge, have devised a new aircraft in the hopes that we may be able to use it to gain access to Needhog's lair, the Airy. However, it's not finished yet. And so, to preoccupy us, we've been asked to come back to Thanalyn, where we have discovered that the Sultana is indeed in a deep slumber, and we were looking to get information out of the lady-in-waiting who belonged to the Sultana, who worked for her, who had administered said potion. And now, we're going to hopefully make our way back to Ulda and hope that everything works out well. But keep your fingers crossed, it might not end that way. So, let's speak with Alphanode to take on the level 54 challenge entitled Awakening in Ulda. Alphanode would see this dark chapter in Ulda's history brought to a close. Shall we also make our way to Ulda? I should imagine Bartholomew has been instructed to admit us. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Alright, we'll go to Ulda. It's gonna make our Presence known for the first time here within the Realm Reborn store in the Heaven's Ward storyline. Sorry, so that means we will now have spent time in all three city states now of Eorzea within the Heaven's Ward story. And so now, tricks are for kids. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds. Yeah, I keep finding more and more creative names that come up in that people have. Alright, so let's start making our way south to where the Royal Promenade is. If you're wondering about the um, challenge that I can't unlock, it is through... Uh, it's always these guys. It is through um, being a paladin which is the Enhanced Warrior class of the Gladiator. Alright, let's make our way up to Bartholomew and continue on with our challenge. Flame General Robon mentioned you might be coming. Please, this way if you will. And so now, back where this bloody massacre went down, at the end of Romy Born, Okay, yes, that would be the Sultana, at least we hope it is. I mean, for all know, it could be a doppelganger. For all we know, it could be just a, a doll. It, it could be anything other than the Sultana. I'm still waiting for us to get tricked to that point. Well, she is breathing. So yeah, come on Prince Charming, it's time to awaken your sleeping beauty. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, the general is not exactly a Prince Charming. <sighs> oh, we hear her voice. She is opening her eyes. Yeah, she's been out for quite a while. Take a I look at your protector. Having the longest dream. It wasn't a dream. Tis time to wake up, your grace. Another day begins in Thanalan, and the sun blazes bright upon the sands. Yeah, but of course we'll have to get the Sultana back up to speed if this is indeed her. And so now... Formal introduction time. 
Her grace is awoken. The palace physician assures me she is none the worse for her slumber. Well, that's good to know. I believe her grace will soon resume her plans to place the government of Ulda into the hands of its citizens. Whatever path she chooses to take, I shall walk it with her. And we shall tread slowly, lest the nation be unsettled in our wake. Unless you object. Her Grace's compassion is a shining beacon to us all. But what our city truly thrives upon is competition. Yeah, this is probably why he is. He's hanging his head like that. Tis in the struggle against our rivals that opportunities are seized and fortunes made. And with the Empire on the offensive once more, now would hardly seem the time to turn our system of government upon its head. Are you privy to new intelligence, my lord? I would Go on. hardly call it new. Remind me, what was the name of that enormous Imperial warship which met its end in Mordona? Oh, wait, I have it. The Agrius, yes, well, it would appear that the Galeans have been hard at work on another such vessel. How close are they to completing this ship? Is it operational? Its maiden flight was a success, I hear. I should imagine Emperor Varys is eager to see how it performs in battle. Oh, great. My lords and lady. I move that it is time to repair the damage caused by Telegi Adelegi and prepare our great nation to repel the Empire once more. But how long do we know it is until they actually show up? And how long are we going to keep a steady yen waiting? I just have to say, I'm not looking all that optimistic about what could possibly well happen. The Sultana has awoken. The Syndicate yet needs to put its house in order, but would seem the worst of the confusion has passed. But can you reclaim Uldar your crystal has taken braves? Control of its future, and I must do the same. I have decided to disband the Crystal Braves. I guess that's a no. Among the recruits, there were those who supported our Order's goals and convictions with all sincerity. Tis my hope that these loyal men and women will choose to remain our allies in the battles to come. As for those who sided with the traitor, Ilbird, they shall be hunted down and held to account for their crimes. It is my earnest hope that they will surrender themselves peaceably when the time comes. Though I think it unlikely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we can obviously see the distressed thought look on my face. Graves. The model army meant to pave the way for a single unified grand company of Eorzea. That so high an ideal should be brought so low. I need not tell you how deeply the betrayal stung me. Oh, of course. Now, it stung us all. Naivety and pride which allowed the Braves to fall prey to corruption. As ever, it is to your own shining example that I turn for inspiration. Like you, I mean to stand firm in the face of hardship and give mine all for the cause. Let us resume the search for our missing comrades, that we might come together to shine the light of dawn across the realm once more. Let's hope you're right about that. Let's hope they can the still role be found. The brave commander suited me ill, and I shall play it no longer. Henceforth, I shall be no more or less than Alfino, proud member of the Scions. Yeah, but what if those who were loyal to you, like Riol or Alian, actually do want you to ensure that the Crystal Braves forge on? What if they want you to continue to have that opportunity to lead them? And what if they want you to actually rebuild it? I mean... 
I, I cannot imagine that the any storyline dealing with the Crystal Braves, either those who are loyal to Alpha Node or those who are loyal to themselves, will be ending so soon. Because of course it's not. We will see this story manifest itself again. So let's speak with Alphanode to complete the challenge. I blush to speak thus of mine inner turmoil. But the fact remains there is no man alive in whom I would rather confide. Were it not for your shining example, I might have never emerged from beneath the pall of my despair. And so, let's go ahead and take another belt. And take on Nelfano's next challenge. If we're fortunate enough, and there are three more of these, we might be able to go directly to 55 without the need for a side quest. That would make me very happy. So let's speak with Alphanode to take on the level 54 challenge entitled A Brave Solution. Alphanode would know how things stand at the Rising Stones. I think that would be a good idea. Hmm. Still no word from Master Garland. I hope this mana cutter of theirs is nearing completion. Meanwhile, Lady Ugiri arrives. I am sure that her grace will make a full recovery. Are you going to stand by her? I and old R2 shall flourish once more. General Rabon and his colleagues have matters well in hand, I believe. Lady Ugiri, a question if I may. I believe your people have been keeping a close watch on the Crystal Braves. Might you know how things stand at the Rising Stones? Ah, yes, of course. You'll be pleased to know that the third unit braves abandoned Ravnus Toll when they learned of Captain Ilbert's defeat. The only blue uniforms to be seen there now are those worn by soldiers loyal to you, Master Tis To me? To me? Oh, I see. I'm grateful to hear that at least some of our members are true to their oaths. Ere we return to Ishgard, I must go to the Rising Stones and thank these souls for their service. It shall be my final act as Crystal Brave Commander. Will you join me, Mathia? You were out there at the company's inception. It is only fitting you be present at its end. And I would appreciate the support. <laughs> I don't think they will let you give up on it so easily. I really do believe that they will not let you abandon your ambition that easily. It just doesn't make any sense for it to be that way. So I might as well go to dress uniform for this. And warp to Mordona. Because yeah, it'll be our first time for a while to be in Mordona. We actually have been here already during the main story because the Admiral Merweb actually asked us to find a Doman agent who was working in a Mordone kitchen. In a Mordonian kitchen. I'm, I'm not sure how to exactly pronounce the demonym or what it would be, but I'm guessing Mordonian would probably be the most suited and the most appropriate. Okay. Time to make our way back to the Rising Stones. While well, we do see Crystal Brave still standing here, I want to check that one Crystal Brave. Because I want to see what she says to me now. Because she was... spoke very differently the last time I saw her, but I don't actually think this is the same per- No, it is the same person. Okay. You! We rejoice that you return, to esteemed and merciful warrior of light. Please have mercy on me! <laughs> yeah. You're lucky I can hold my lance as well as I hold my tongue. Because, of course, the warrior of light is always the strong silent type. And we can go into the Rising Stones without any obstruction. So as we arrive, we find Doman Zol well and good. Yeah, they're all, they are all Crystal Braves, but they're no longer in uniform. Uh, come, come on down! You, you're alive! And Mathia too! I knew you'd scrape through! The few the proud, I guess. My splendid Crystal Braves, I have wronged you, all of you. My promises of glory and salvation have brought you naught but blood and betrayal. Bah, you'll not hear us complaining. It was a sight messier than expected I. But we were still fighting for the freedom of all just like we swore. Ain't that right, mates? 
<laughs> yeah, I have some bad news. You humble me. I am truly blessed to have such steadfast comrades. It is with the most profound regret, then, that I must... That's enough of that, Commander. We know what you've a mind to say, and we ain't having none of it. Yeah, I knew they wouldn't allow it to happen. We've talked over it. We talked it over, see? And we all agreed. You can take our uniforms and strip us of our ranks, but we won't be no less of a company. But the Crystal Braves... The Crystal Braves may be finished, but the ideals upon which the company was founded live on. They bind us to each other and to you. Commander, Alpha Node, our minds are made up, so you may as well get used to it. Let us help the Scions. Let us help you find Menphilia and the others. Yeah, we're all in agreement on this. Yeah, you can't get rid of us this easily, Alpha Node. Uh, my friends, uh, after all that has happened, I know not what to say. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, I think he has his strength back. Or he's just gonna... Um, cry tears of joy. <laughs> yeah, I think it is tears of joy that he's crying. Alpha Node... Pray excuse me, I thought I had my tears spent. My grandfather used to say that one can measure a man by the constancy of his comrades. May I hap I am the exception which proves the rule. Nay, nor do I pr not protest. I know that I am not worthy of their loyalty, Mathia. But as Thaliak is my witness, I shall do everything in my power to earn it. And so, another 64, 2000 experience comes my way. And now we must side quest. Very well. Well, since we know that the next challenge is to come at level 55, I think we're... Well, actually, we're still less than 20 minutes in, so... There are still some quests back at Annex Shrine that I did not have the opportunity yet to do. Or elsewhere within the Dravanian Forelands, for that matter. So, I think that's only fair that since we did not finish our business with that one little dragon, I think it's time that we actually go back to pay him a visit. So, I'll see you back there in a moment. Okay, so we have returned to Annex Trine, and I'm sure you are familiar with Kalnmik, the little dragon who we were able to gain the trust of. But after encountering his brother, he feels that he has lost the ability to trust us. So, let's hope we can continue on with the quest and be able to regain the trust again, and hope that it can be bestowed to his brother. So, let's speak with Kalnmik to take on the level 53 challenge entitled, The Heart of a Dragon. Call Mix looks at you with a sense of unease. Tell me, player, Mathia, have you ever killed a dragon? Am I any different from those that have fallen at your hands? If our first meeting had been beyond these walls, I fear I would be lying in the halls of mourn in my brother's place. Okay, so we have to use an emote here, so we have to soothe Call Mick. So let's hope that this works. Perhaps you are right. I do not doubt the words of brother, that men can be heartless and cruel, but all men are not the same. You are not like those who struck down brother. You and brother are both family to me, and I can never forsake either of you. Mathia, we have to help him. Let us speak with mother. She will know the way to heal him. That's what I was hoping to hear. That means we once again say a chance to get the opportunity to meet with Gulen Kambi. Call Mick's mother, and so that means we will once again make a journey that is all too familiar with us here on the grounds of Annex Trine. As we get to see the ever-growing variety of mounts that are available to people within this game. Alright, so let's weave through the pillars and once again make our journey up the legendary stairs. <laughs> and hopefully not get stuck on anything. Yeah, we know for a fact that Gulen Kambi was on the top floor. 
that means we have to take the longest journey to get up there. I just want to make sure that I was not Aranus on that. Nope. Nope, Estas was the Dragoon who had the challenges for us on the second floor. Uh, not Dragoon, Dragon. <laughs> yeah, little bit of a modification with the pronunciation there, Matt. That's all you need to do. Alright, back to Gunan Kambi. And with Kombik and her eggs at her side. Mafia, Kolmik, what brings you here? Well, if you must know... Attacked in Cathas? He was more not to approach his guard. Luck is the pace, price he pays for disobedience. But given time, his wounds will heal. Or may heal. We do not interfere with the natural order. We sleep until our wounds are healed, or seek silence in the halls of morn. That is our way! Hmm. You remind me of another from long ago. One who longed to grant dragons succor. The fruits of his labor may still linger. If you would seek it, you must find the place he once called home. A hovel of stone high along the mountainside. Thank you for your wisdom, mother. It shall not be wasted. And so let's speak with Kamek to see where this place is. Her words are vague, but I have seen the place she speaks of. I will show you the way as best I can. Meet me where the mountain path first parts. Oh, okay, so we're going higher up the mountain. That's actually fine by me. What's not fine by me is the fact that I still can't get these button, conf button configurations right. Their intricacies still elude me. That I'm more likely to turn to teleportation than I am to riding my chocobo. Alright, we won't bother with the Gallimimus. They're not worth our time or trouble. But yeah, where the mountain path first splits is going to be right up here. We've done this trek quite a few times before. More often than not without success, but here we will hopefully use it to our advantage. And so let's speak with Kalmek to see what he's looking for, what he wants us to look for. The path only grows more perilous, so stay on your guard. I will meet you closer to its end, near the top. Alright, so... Yes, we must continue up this mountain path. So make the big U-turn, and now begin to go up this path. As the climb gets steeper and this the gradient becomes more pronounced. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely an HC category climb in the Tour de France, no question. Yeah, I know it isn't as respected and revered an event as it once was because of rampant steroid use, but for those of who were able to keep it clean, you still have to appreciate the fact that they're able to do that much cycling over that many mountains and hills and whatnot over that amount of a period of time. Okay, so almost to the top here. Not quite there yet, but almost. As long as the Gallimimus don't bother us, we will not bother them. Alright, Kyle Nick. How much further are we going up? You've almost reached the end! Come this way! Alright, onward, Kyle Nick. And thus, we resume our ascent. Now, once we get an opportunity, I want to take a vantage point of where we are, because thankfully, the start the it's a clear sky tonight so we can make use of this so we finally reached the summit of this path all right so let's take a look at where we are in the world and look at the crazy legend of dragoon style trees that are all about along with annex trine over there there's the knots homeland yeah we pretty much can see everything from here and think i in fact i think i can even see tail feather i mean you have to admit we are this is very impressive where we are. In fact, I gotta take a snap of this. Um, try and get everything in there. The trees, Annex Trines, Hill Feather, and the Nath Homeland. That should do. Alright. Let's dismount for my Chocobo and speak with Kalmik. We can climb no further. Instead, we must descend. There is no path, but I trust you will have no trouble. Be careful! 
So now where are you sending us? And yeah, we gotta follow him down the mountain. So we gotta go over this way. So by the looks of it, we're going back to the first split off. And then are we... Huh. It's really hard to tell from how I'm reading this map. I just hope that we can actually find what he wants us to go down. So why don't we... I think it'll be quicker to just warp back down to the bottom of Annex Trine and start climbing again. I just think it makes more sense this way to do it in this manner because it's a long way back down. And quite frankly, I think it'll be quicker than winding and minute meandering our way up or down the mountain pass that we just came up. Plus, I don't want to overexert my chocobo, even though he can just run for seemingly forever. Alright, so up we go. Back up the stairs we've already climbed in this episode, and many more prior to it. Yeah, it's certainly very big, steep, and menacing and intimidating, but if you're wanting to put up the efforts, I mean, good on ya. I mean, imagine if you had to climb a tower like this in real life, without the assistance of something that could climb, that you had to rely on nothing more than your own two legs to get the job done. Okay, so, back out to this area, which means we once again have to cross paths with Gallimimus. And this fate is still ongoing. Alright, Abolathia Foothills. Nice to meet you again. But they almost don't seem like foothills, do they? They feel like a true mountain path. So we'll get ourselves to where we need to go. And hopefully the path that we're going will be the right one. Just want to read... Oh, I, sh I shouldn't be... Yeah, I shouldn't be next to Gallimimus. No. No. Not allowed. Not encouraged. Not recommended. No. No, I say no. Okay, let's read the map again. Oops. Get, my, my, get back on my chocobo. Alright, so... If we're reading the map correctly, hopefully we will be getting ourselves to where Comic wants us to be. So that means we will be now be running past Vinegar Runes. And Earth Sprites. And I think there was more than just those two enemies in this cavern. Yeah, Strictas. Oh, gonna go and get at me on its sights because it just turned around. Uh, I'm worried. Because, yeah, I'm trying to read the map and it's really hard to say what we could be following or what we could be looking for. I mean, trying to read this from the vantage point I have, it almost feels like... Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Um... Yeah, what if we can actually go up here and actually gain another path somewhere? Um, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, call Mick. We, judging from the map, I'm about to go the, the wrong way. Because, yeah, I'm trying to figure this out, and it doesn't... S it, it's hard to tell from this vantage point, because I'm trying to look for what seems to be a split path, but it's not revealing itself as such, because, yeah, we're going down this way. We're not going up. We're not going north. It's, we're co getting contradicted here is what's happening. Unless the... no. And geez there, comic, why are you sending me? Yeah, because I'm about to hit the wall again. Just like I did a number of episodes ago. Because yeah, we're about to run out of real estate to run, and we know for a fact we cannot go past this point that I'm approaching. 
Uh, that really sucks. How the heck would you get over to there? Because I'm trying to read the map, and it's just very confusing to me. I think the only way you can get here is by taking, um, is finding the remaining Aether Currents to, um, be able to have your Chocobo fly. But we also know for a fact, if we zoom out, there is still a whole bunch of map of challenges we have yet to do. That are 52s. I mean, who knows, honestly, how long this could take. Alright, so... Wow. How the... How the heck are you supposed to get to this path? I mean... Let's try and read this map again. I think what may have happened is that... What this path is supposed to be... Is possibly another path to mourn, but... You know, we have this one area of the map we have yet to uncover... But it looks like it's underneath the access point. I know that people have been saying that this is a quest that was not something that they enjoyed because it was confusing. I'm beginning to see why that is. Yeah, because, yeah, I, I would prefer that Call Mick just allowed us to remain at the summit. Because in the best interests of what we're trying to accomplish, that's what should have happened. That's what should have happened, but unfortunately it has not. So, back over here to the cave. I mean, the, the only other viable option I see as a possibility is trying to get ourselves up there and trying to get an access to a, a, an alternate path. But by the looks of it, there's no viable entry point for gaining access up there unless we can climb up here, possibly. Uh, yeah, this, this game is trolling me right now badly. It is trolling me right now, and it is not good, and I don't like it. Uh, cause yeah, he tries so hard to get up there, but yeah, we can't get up there. So then, how the heck... Yeah, it seems like the only way he can get up there is by flying. <sighs> Alright. So, we're gonna have to... Um... You know what, I'm going to try and see if I can put out a shout to see if anyone knows where this can be. So, I think we're going to call the episode here, and hopefully by the time that I rejoin you guys, we will have been able to finally get the solution that we've been looking for, because, yeah, the way the map is pointed and the way it's reading right now, we can't possibly get to Kalmyk unless we complete all the challenges that allow my Chocobo to fly within Giovannian soil. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Ward. And when I join you again, we will see if someone has information that we need that will allow us to be able to reach Kalmyk and complete this particular side quest. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Navarro Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.